How you doing guys? So um today I just want to do a quick uh teaching pretty much of uh what is known as the rapture, even though in the Bible it is not known as the rapture. Uh but it's a part in the Bible where it talks about uh the body of Christ will be meeting the Lord in the air. And I want to talk about that versus the second coming of Christ. So I wrote that up on the board. So today that's what we're going to be rightly dividing. <clears throat> on the left side here, you've got the second coming of Christ, which I noticed that a lot of people, people today, for whatever reason, are, are turning away from the catching away, the, uh, me the meeting the Lord in the air, that part in the Bible. And they're, they're blending these two together. So whenever you tell somebody, like, I I'm going to be leaving, you know, I I'm the body of Christ, I'm going to be leaving this earth, they'll say, no, you won't. There, there is no catching away. You're going to go through the tribulation and, and all this. But again, this is why I put this up on the board. And actually, let me give you, let me write down the scriptures for you real quick. That is one thing I forgot to do. Okay, so this is going to be right here. First Thessalonians. I don't know if you guys can see that or not, but this is this entire thing is 1 Thessalonians 4.17. And this over here is going to be in Revelations. Revelations 1.7. Revelations 1, verse 7. There you go. I forgot to put that up there. So, that's where you can find these. And if you notice, I mean, with some common sense, as the Bible lays out, Revelations is your last book in the Bible, right? And this is in 1 Thessalonians. So, they're already divided for us. They're already in separate books, not the same book. Uh, 1 Thessalonians is a book written by Paul. That's, that's Paul's epistle. The Revelations is John's book. So they're already rightly divided, but again, today our, people are still blending them together, trying to create their own doctrine pretty much. But they're, they're so easily separated, it's, it's almost like if you just, like I said, if you just believe what your Bible says, you, you have the answer. So, right, give me one second. Let's go ahead and start with the catching away. So, let's read this. Then we, I'm going to highlight some words. Then we which are alive and remain. So, these people are alive and remain. Shall be, here we go caught up together with them in the clouds them that's important it means there's people already there in the clouds to meet the lord in the air the location will be meeting the lord in the air and so shall we ever be with the lord that's the catching away. That's the body of Christ going up into the sky. If you deny this principle in your Bible, you are not a Bible believer. 
Do you need to believe this to be saved? No. But again, this is another example of the Bible says one thing, but what man has changed it to say whatever they want to. So they, they don't see these as separate events. The catching away is an event. The second coming of Christ is an event. And I'm going to show you why. These people, as I've just read, without reading the second coming of Christ, they what? Were alive and remain. They were caught up together with them. Where? In the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And they're going to be there. They're going to be with the Lord forever. Here's the second coming of Christ. Entirely different, might I add. The, even the uh, circumstances, uh, everything is different. And even the attitude towards seeing Jesus Christ is different. You're going to see that. Behold, he cometh with clouds, and every eye, so that's every eye, every person, everything. I mean, you said every eye, so anything that's got an eye on earth is going to see Jesus Christ. Every eye shall see him, and they also which pierced him, and all kindreds, kindreds of the earth shall wail because of him. Even so, amen. Now, I took the liberty, I looked up the definition of wail. Wail means to a cry of pain, grief, or anger. Now, here's my question. These people in the catching away, where I'm going to be, doesn't say anything about them wailing, being crying, anything like that. The second coming of Christ, the appearance of Jesus Christ coming back, causes people to wail. And we just told you what wail means, a cry of pain, grief, or anger meaning jesus christ coming back will not be a good thing for the people that remain on the earth any person that's like i can't wait to see jesus come back well this book is telling you right here you don't want to see jesus christ come back i'm gonna tell you why if you're at that on the earth when you're seeing jesus christ come back you're gonna be the person judged you're going to be the, the goat that gets, you know, using that, that the, uh, this is another verse in the Bible, um, talks about sheep and goats. And, uh, and I, I'm still studying that to understand the division there between the sheep and the goats. Some people say the sheep nations are the nations that will make it into the, uh, millennial kingdom and the goat nations will be destroyed. Those are the ones that follow the antichrist, those nations that, that took the mark of the beast. Um, all I know is I, I have to keep reading that. Out of this, the con, out of out of reading this, this is a bad thing for anybody on earth. If you are here at the second coming of Christ, it's going to be a bad day for you, and you'll be willing. So this for the seven day Adventists, for the uh, Mormons, for the Methodists, for the Baptists, for all, everybody that does not any religious sect that claims they believe in Jesus Christ, but do not rightly divide the Bible. And you think, I'm going through tribulation. I I'm going to be going through that, and I'm going to see Jesus Christ come back. You will be wailing. You'll be crying in pain, grief, or anger at the sight of Jesus Christ. You won't be happy. Yes, Jesus Christ coming. I think the Jews will. They'll be happy. But again... There's parts in the Bible that talk about the Jews being uh, caught away during the uh, revelations. Uh, there'll be Gentiles that'll be caught away. So again, to me, it seems that every person that is left on the earth after these uh, catchings away, I mean, the, these different groups of people that are called away, the first group of people are the body of Christ, us which are saved today in this dispensation of grace. Then you're going to have the... Um, the Jews, the election. Then you're going to have the Gentiles. You have different groups of people in the Bible that get caught away. This is an example of any person left on the earth, just from what this verse is saying, will be wailing in pain. So I just want to explain that today because many people blend these together. You need to keep them separate. Like this line right here, 
It's like a wall. You need to keep these, these, these um, verses separate. Don't blend these doctrines, these teachings together because they're not. You can clearly see just with common sense. An atheist could see what I'm saying right now. He may not believe the Bible. He may not believe God. But he can see the clear logical evidence that these are separated. And some of the most difficult people are religious people. These, these are your people that, like I said, Baptists, Methodists, Seventh-day Adventists, Mormons. All these people that say they love Jesus Christ, but they don't rightly divide the Bible. They don't even understand the logic of the Bible. You got people speaking in tongues, uh, saying a language that's just, it's not, it's not a language. Let me, let me disagree with you. That's, it's not even a language. It's just gibberish. It's vain babblings, chanting, Jesus, 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 you know, just like crazy stuff, man. Like none of it is in the Bible, like rightly dividing is in the Bible. So that's what I'm doing today. I'm rightly dividing between these two group of uh, these two events in your Bible so you can see the clear difference It's it's very clear. Go to these verses, take, take. One hand and go to 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 17. Take the other hand, go to Revelation chapter 1, verse 7. Two different pieces of paper, right? Like, compare them. <laughs> it's, it's so simple, but you'll be surprised how many people hate rightly dividing. They hate this. And I don't know why, because when I started doing this, the Bible makes sense. The Bible doesn't make any sense any other way. These are two different events. Some people say, you ain't got to do that. You ain't got to rightly divide. You don't, you don't need to do all that. Well, if you don't rightly divide, you're going to be what? Ended up sacrificing animals today. But then what's funny to me is certain people will be like, well, of course, then that's when they become, uh, you know, I, I don't know. Try to basically tell you, oh, that's stupid. Of course, I'm not going to sacrifice an animal. Well, you're rightly dividing right there. If you know you're not supposed to be sacrificing uh, sheep and stuff today, then right there you know God is doing something different today versus what he did in the past. Because if you really believe every single thing in the Bible is directed towards you, you would be doing every single thing in the Bible. So you're actually disobeying God. If you believe you're under the law, if you believe you, you know everything in the Bible is to you, then why aren't you sacrificing animals today? Why don't you build an ark? You see how stupid this is? Um, and, and look, it, it's all right. We, we, we was taught, we, we were taught wrong from the beginning, guys. I was taught wrong from the beginning. Everybody was taught wrong from the beginning. I, I guess you could say my, my only frustration that I have is when I present this to people and they can look at it, like they can just look at it and say, yeah, I just don't agree with that. Can you give me a reason why? No, I can't. They just, it's like right then and there, they just prove they don't believe the Bible. Because this is just so easy. But, um, all right, guys, I hope this edified you today. And uh, you can learn something from it. And if this is your first time seeing what rightly dividing is, this is what it is. It's comparing scripture with scripture. It's taking one book and comparing it to another book. And the Bible actually tells you to do this. Uh, if you go to, let me find it. Because this is not something that is made up. Okay, if you go to 2 Timothy, I don't have room to, to put it on here. If you go to 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 15, it says, Study to show thyself approved to God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. That's the, what I just explained. You, you need to divide it. They can't be together, right? They can't be one. This is a situation when you divide, you're always going to end up with two. When you divide, that's what we're doing right here. <laughs> Um, and how this makes sense? Why does God tell us to rightly divide his words? 
because there's something also in the Bible known as dispensations. You can look this up as well. You can go to Hebrews chapter 1 verse 1 and tells you and explains what he what uh, dispensations are. Here we go. God, who at sundry times and in diverse manners spoke, spake in time past to the fathers by the prophets. What that is saying is God, who at different times. Hold on. Let me see. Actually, no, I don't have room. You can look up the word diverse and sundry so you can understand. It's, it's saying God in different times. Let me, let me see, sundry manners and divers. I want to give you the actual definition, like right now, and not be trying to remember. Sundry, several, more than one or two, diverse. So, you can say several, God at several times and diverse, diverse. Really means different. Yeah, different. So it's several times and in different manners. Isn't that amazing to see that God gives you the answer as to why you need to rightly divide? He's telling you, God, who at several times and in different manners spake. So we understand just from that by itself. Again, look up Hebrews 1.1 so you can see. If God is communicating to us that he spoke in several at, at several times and in different manners. So his manner wasn't always the same. And that's that's basically saying the way he spoke was not always the same. So you can't take information God said to Noah and say it's for you. And this is just common sense. People know this. They just fight against it. The information that was given to Noah is not for you. So the information given to Revelations is not for you. The Re the, God tells you when the information is for you. Why? How do we know this? Because there's two groups in the Bible. You're either a Jew or you're a Gentile. Paul is the only apostle speaking to Jews and Gentile today, Gentiles today. The Jews, the nation of Israel, is fallen. The, there is no nation of Israel today. Today, Jew and Gentile are getting saved. In the past, in the Old Testament, Gentiles, Jesus Christ was never sent to them. A Gentile, the only way a Gentile could be saved was to go to the Jews for salvation. They had to go and be, basically become a Jew. They didn't even, when, when a Gentile... Uh, I think it's known as a proselyte. When they converted over to Judaism, they were not even seen as a Gentile anymore. They were a Gentile before, now they've become a Jew. And in our time today, there is no Jew or Gentile in the body of Christ. There's, there is no, yeah, you can be a Jew or a Gentile today, but when you're saved, now you're in the body of Christ. God doesn't even see you as a Jew. He doesn't see you as a Gentile. But there is no, I just want to, uh, so people can understand the nation of Israel was at one time, uh, you know, they were risen. Today, they've fallen. This is why you need to rightly divide. There's information that is only to the nation of Israel. Not saying Jew. I'm saying to the nation of Israel. Because Paul was giving information to Jews and Gentiles, to both of us. So, you need to understand that. People mix that together and say, well, Revelations is, Revelations is for the nation of Israel. You're not the nation of Israel. How do we know? Because these events, God is doing all this to, this is, it's, it's Jacob's trouble. That's what Revelations is for, not the Gentiles. 
Now, the Gent Satan is using the Gentiles during the uh, revelations to make war with the Jews, well, with the nation of Israel. But today, there's no nation of Israel. None of these events, the second coming of Christ, isn't going to happen bef um, before this. This is going to happen before this. That's what I'm trying to get you to, to see. To see the division, the catching away will be the first thing that happens. Then... When we're gone, tribulation starts. Then all the events of revelation and everything is going to take place. Then this is going to happen pretty much at the end. And again, you don't want to be here. So, um, in other my videos, a lot of my videos, I've explained how to rightly divide. But today, I just want to rightly divide the catching away versus the second coming of Christ. All right, guys. Have a great day.